Welcome to St. Elizabeth St. Bridget Parish on the Nativity of the Lord. On behalf of our pastor, Monsignor Paleo, the priests of the parish, and the parish staff, we pray that your Christmas will be filled with faith, hope, love, and peace for you and your family, as well as the whole world. Please silence all cell phones. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends in the Lord, we come here tonight to celebrate the mystery of the Nativity, how Christ's greatest miracle was becoming man, one of us in our midst. Let us prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries by asking the Lord for his pardon and for his peace. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have come to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us into the ways of everlasting life. For you are the way and the truth. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we await in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we 
to joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer. We may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her benediction shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight, and your Lord and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it, then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought, brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Good. 
good news and great joy to all the world. Today is born our Savior Christ the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about, when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Yet before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention. When, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son and named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. If I were to ask you, what is the miracle of Christmas? Many of you might come out and say, the virgin's birth. Many of you might come out and say, the miracle of Christmas is how shepherds who were shabby and emerald-laden kings would go to the little crib. If I would say to you, what is the miracle of Christmas? You'd say, it's the star of Bethlehem shining over the city known as the city of bread. But I dare say the greatest of all miracles is this, the miracle of Christ Jesus, the Son of God being born as a man. Oh, there are many other miracles, but that is the greatest of all miracles, how God becomes man like one of us. We read in sacred scripture how our blessed Lord performed many other miracles, how he took common wine, and transformed it into wine at the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee. We hear about how Jesus touches the eyes of a blind man who was living in darkness and by that singular touch was able to see the great light. Many would claim that to be a miracle. Others would say the miracle would be removing someone from a tomb such as Lazarus and seeing that shroud taken off him. And yet others would say that the miracle of Jesus was the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes where just a little into the hands of the Almighty became so much. But I dare say, all those miracles pale in comparison to God becoming man. Pale in comparison. What is it about the name of Jesus that from the high we are always taught to revere that name? Because the name means that he will save us from our sins. He is Emmanuel. 
even as we profess our profound faith, especially at Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, when we hear these words incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the congregation is asked to genuflect. Because understanding that we are revering the greatest of all miracles, and yet that miracle is given to us in the Eucharist, always abiding in our presence. Now, there are so many different signs and wonders that are in our midst in the world. You know, I think that we could take a lot of consolation in beautiful poinsettias. We could take consolation in the fact that there is a Christmas bulletin that explains the tradition or a legend of poinsettias. We can pick up a book that we obtained for each of you and your families. Do something beautiful for God. And I heard God laugh. That's a back to church after Mass. I hope that you would avail yourself of that. But during Christmas, I like to just sit and think about all the wonderful things that the Lord has done. You know, I live with a priest. His name is Father Hillier. You know him, right? Now, Father Hillier is what I would consider to be a theologian in intellect. And I decided to pick up this book. And this book is The Spider Who Saved Christmas, a legend. Anybody hear about it? And wouldn't you know it? I said to him, this is a great book. He said, that's a children's book. I said, well, usually at the 4 o'clock mass, we have a children's liturgy. But because of COVID this year, we're not able to. But I'd like to use that book. And then Father Hill, you read it. He said, that's a children's book. I said, no, it's a book for adults. And he looked at me and he said, yeah. I said, well, you read it. So you're an adult. So you're not a child. So it's an adult book. And then he began to read it. And wouldn't you know it, at the 2 o'clock mass, he stole my thunder. Right? That's what happens when you live with brothers in the same rectory. And he talked a little bit about that book. And what's this book about? I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to save it for next year. All right? But by then, you'll all pick it up, and you're all going to buy it, I know. You know. And then you can ask Raymond Arroyo from EWTN to send us the royalties all right, to our little parish here. Will you do that for us? All right. Well, it's a book about a spider that saved Christmas called Nephala, which is a different type of a spider. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but really what the spider does is comes across the babe and the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. And as they are homeless, they enter into a cave as the tradition or legend has it. And the spider wants to protect the Holy Family from the marauders of the Roman soldiers who will slaughter the little ones. And so the story goes on to say that the spider Nephali begins to web a beautiful web over the entrance of the cave that it's a golden web. And when the Roman soldiers came by, they saw the web and guess what happened? How many of us are afraid of spiders? All right, good, so you know what happens. The soldiers came by and they saw this gigantic spider outside and said, no baby would ever be in there, and they moved on. There's a great tradition or great legend about that spider that the people in Poland, the Ukrainians, and many other Eastern Europeans, and even the Irish, they commemorate this spider that saved Christmas by putting tinsel on their trees. Did you know that? Yeah, some did, some didn't. Father Hillier didn't know it until I read, he read this book. But why is this such an important point? The Thali's gift to the Christ child is remembered in the sparkling tinsel that drips from evergreen trees from all over the world at Christmas time. Here is the moral of the story. Hold on to it. Like each of us, she was there for a reason. You were born after the birth of Christ for a reason. You were here for a reason. 
One of my favorite of all movies around Christmas time is not The Grinch Stole Christmas Now. But it's a classical movie, 1946. I even wrote about it. It's called It's a Wonderful Life. Have you seen that movie? And it was, it's, it's wonderful. Frank Capra made the film actually, as he said, to combat modern atheism. In 1946? What year are we in? All these years later, the film continues with the same beautiful message that George Bailey, who's played by an actor called Jimmy Stewart, is a man who has given up on his dreams to help others. And then what happens? He wants to commit suicide on Christmas Eve because he's discouraged. And then the movie goes on to say that there's a great intervention. An angel appears to him, his guardian angel, Clarence. Do you remember that movie? Clarence is a little funny looking old man. And the angel shows George how he, George, is in fact has touched many, many lives and how different life would be. Not only for his wife Mary, for his family, but for all of Bedford Falls if he had not been born. How many of us have contemplated life with or without some of our personal participation? How different would your life be or the lives of your others if you were not here? Or how different would our life be if we were not recipients of the miracle of the birth of Christ? One of my favorite of all saints is Saint John the 23rd. You know why I like him so much? I like him because he was about this big and this wide, yeah? He's a real saint. He's a real saint who loved to eat and loved to joke and a holy man. When I had the opportunity to go to Rome some years ago, I went by his crypt and I uttered a little prayer. And I began to think about all the different things that he would say. There is one thought I'd like to leave from St. John the 23rd with you tonight. This is what he writes. Do not walk through time without leaving worthy evidence of your passage. Do not walk through time without leaving worthy evidence of your passion. I know it's been a difficult year. It's a year of reflection and introspection. If there is anything, I'm not saying that it is positive about the coronavirus, it's just by the fact that at least it helped us to slow down and to take stock of who we are and where we're going in life. Paramount among the matters that we should be concerned about is our precious Catholic faith and the richness of that faith. I'll go back to the greatest of all miracles, the miracle of God becoming man. For all the negatives that we have heard about Holy Mother of the Church and our religion, the fact remains that the churches where we could find Christ truly present, fully present, as he has promised us that would remain with us here in the Eucharist, here in the tabernacle. That's why the church is so beautiful. When people come in, the first thing they do is they call upon the name of Jesus and they genuflect. Let not the negativity of a passing world, even in the midst of a pandemic, keep you away from Christ. We must all do our part, yes, us humans. Most especially those who lead the church in offices where we would never visit have an obligation to lead others to Christ. Our precious faith in Jesus helps us to understand 
that he never leaves us, that he always abides with us in the Eucharist and guides us. That's why I've written for a couple of weeks, and I'm speaking it again tonight, that we need him so desperately in Holy Communion. Please make it an opportunity to visit him often in the Blessed Sacrament. The truth is that Jesus helps us move our hearts and our minds to become what I would consider to be givers and not takers. Do not walk through time without leaving some worthy evidence of your passage. Be a giver. And we could give ourselves more importantly through Christ every time we do something out of charity for our loved ones, our family members, our neighborhood, and especially those least among us. During these Christmas days, and as we approach a brand new year, 2021, try to consider how might you fall in love Try to consider how you might fall in love with Jesus. How you might fall in love in receiving him in Holy Communion and pursue him in the life of charity. He asks us again and again to discover despite our fixation on the coronavirus that yes, that God has given us something wonderful. And as the movie says, it is a wonderful life. It is a wonderful life in Christ because a miracle has occurred some 2,000 years ago. And the miracle continues to exist. Every time we call upon the name of Jesus and bend our knee in reverence to God becoming one like us. Merry Christmas. And may this Christmas be for you a source of strength, a source of inspiration, and be for you a glimpse into the insight of the wonderful life that God has for each of us. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He ascended into heaven, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together, let us offer our prayers to God our Father, knowing that he loves us and he is always there to guide us. For the church, may God's guidance be upon every member in living out the gospel message. We pray to the Lord. That through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and inspiration of the faithful, that vocations to the priesthood and religious life may flourish. We pray to the Lord. For the salvation of the world and the conversion away from sin and toward the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For all the families, that with great faith they will joyfully respond to all that God asks of them and be given strength to always per persevere in love. We pray to the Lord. 
For all of us here, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they be welcomed into the heavenly community and rest in eternal peace, including Alfred Johnson, Carol Welling, Mitchell Pat Patino, Evan Bradshaw, Ingrid Kelly, and all the victims of COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Almighty and eternal God, in Christ Jesus you fulfill your promises to Israel and to make your desire to be with your sons and daughters of humanity. Hear the humble prayers we offer today in his name, Christ our Lord. my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all more eagerly, for knowing that is in them, you make manifest the beginning of our redemption through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we might be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with all the angels and archangels, with dominions and thrones and with the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of glory and without end we so acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, too, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, in all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the holy martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we might merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say. And lead us not to Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we have received, both in food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So, before we give you the final blessing, just want to wish all of you again very blessed and Merry Christmas. For those of you who have, you know, not had the opportunity of visiting um, our parish during uh, Christmas, what we do for giving out Holy Communion is, after the final blessing, I'll be standing on one side and then extraordinary minister will be standing on that side and then you come up for communion you know keep keep your physical distancing okay and then you extend your hand uh, or so and then you know once you receive communion then somebody sanitizes the Eucharistic minister's hand so we try to do that okay so just so you know so I give you the final blessing and uh, you know before I do that I'd give you a little spiritual kiss 
all right? And, uh, and uh, you know, God bless you. I wish to shake all of your hands, but I uh, can't, can't do that, right? The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God.